It's no secret that Asian students, whether South Asian or East Asian, often have a much more intense and disciplined approach to studying than most people around the world. And a big reason for that isn't just pressure, it's how culture and expectations shape the way we think about hard work, success and what it takes to get there. I'm Salim, I'm a doctor based in London and I've spent 8 years at university completing 3 degrees, including med school. And when I reflect on those years, I noticed there were a few study habits that many Asian students had in common, things that made them stand out and consistently outperform everyone else. So I'll break down 4 study strategies that helped me and other Asian students stay consistent, study effectively and still manage a balanced life outside of academics. So first, I think it's fair to say that most people want to succeed. You might want good grades, time to socialise and energy for any personal interests. But you might also want to enjoy every single moment with zero resistance. And deep down, we all know it doesn't work that way. One thing I noticed around Asian culture was how it was normal to treat studying as some form of sacrifice. Whether it was saying no to going out with friends or skipping a popular TV show everyone else is watching. It was understood that those sacrifices were temporary and studying was an investment. And there was this expectation that if you study hard now, life would become easier later. I remember how during my first year of med school, I didn't see some of my closest friends for months. Not because I didn't care, but because I was purely focused on passing the year. And even though it was difficult, I saw it as a short term trade off. I knew that it would get easier after that year and this was the last major hurdle for a while. And that helped me stay disciplined. And obviously while this mindset can go too far sometimes, it does give something that most people never get. And that's long term thinking. Asian students have this long term thinking and don't chase short term comfort, where instead of only treating these sacrifices as a loss, they're seen as a trade off for future freedom. And it's not about giving up on everything, it's about protecting your time and energy for what really matters. I can personally say that the sacrifices I made years ago were worth it, because I've made it through med school and I'm now a doctor and I've sacrificed time on leisure to work on my YouTube channel and coaching and it's all slowly paying off. If you keep the perspective of this long term payoff, it becomes easier to focus, because now instead of just studying for your next exam, you're working for something much bigger. So do what Asian students do and think about what your long term payoff would be and decide what things protects that payoff and what pulls you away from it. And now one of the mistakes I made for years at university was thinking I could study anywhere. I'd revise on my bed, in the kitchen, on the sofa, pretty much any space that I could sit. And for some reason I didn't think it mattered. I just thought I'd be productive regardless and be dependent on my willpower. But I noticed that in a lot of Asian households, studying isn't done casually. It's done in a specific place at a specific time and with specific rules. No distractions, no lounging and no multitasking. This might sound small but it trains your brain to associate that space with focus. Similar to how your urge to use the toilet suddenly increases when you get near one or how your body knows to relax when you lie down in your own bed. Your brain becomes actively aware of this studying exclusive space and reacts in the same way, knowing that it's going to be the time to get studying done. So whether it's a quiet room, a library routine, or just sitting at a clean desk, the goal is the same. Create a space that tells your brain that this is where you focus. The more intentional you are with your environment, the more consistent you are with signalling your brain and the easier it is to get deep work done. It's why I never do any more studying or any YouTube related work anywhere at home besides at my desk because that's where I work best. And now one of the biggest traps most students fall into is waiting to feel motivated. This idea that you'll study when you're in the mood. But for a lot of Asian students that mindset doesn't even cross their mind and there's a good reason for that because most of the time you won't feel like studying. That moment of readiness rarely ever comes, so you'll just keep waiting and waiting for nothing to get done. What I noticed with South and East Asians was that work got done regardless of how people felt. It's part of the culture. Whether it was their parents coming back home after 12 hour shifts to do the cooking, cleaning or extra tutoring, or if it was seeing other students staying focused even if they didn't look like they wanted to, they didn't let their feelings decide their actions. And that's the key mindset shift. Success doesn't come from how you feel. It comes from what you do, especially when you don't feel like it. And this is a key difference between motivation and discipline, where motivation is emotional 
and discipline is structural. Discipline makes studying part of your identity. It's just what you do, not something you negotiate with yourself about. And that's why systems matter, like having a dedicated environment, a set routine, or even pre-decided time blocks for studying. So if you want to build discipline, don't start with massive goals. Start by showing up consistently. Even 30 minutes of focused work at the same time each day can reset your standard. And if you want that consistency to stick, track it. Not to chase streaks or be perfect, but to prove to yourself that you're the kind of person who gets things done, even when it's uncomfortable. I rarely ever wanted to study, and I don't really want to go to the gym or want to practice the piano every day, but I've made it so that it's structured into my life to do those things, even if I'm feeling against it. Now for a quick update, I'm working on building an online course and community and would highly appreciate your feedback and input. So check out the links in the description. It would help me out a lot if you would provide some feedback in terms of what you find helpful from my videos and what you feel would help even more as part of a course or community. Thank you in advance and now back to the video. And now is something we're all aware of and it's that we live in a world built for instant gratification. Fast food when you're hungry, short form content when you're bored, next day delivery when you want something new. But studying is the complete opposite. It's slow, repetitive, and usually boring. But one of the biggest cultural habits I've seen with Asian students, including myself, is being okay with waiting. Delayed gratification isn't just encouraged, it's expected. You study now so you can rest later. There were a lot of times where I wanted to relax or just watch something on the TV, and even when I was writing this script, it was late at night and I wanted to do something else instead. But I've learned to remind myself, every hour I spend now, locked in and focused is an hour I don't have to panic or catch up with later. And over time, those hours compound. Because the truth is, people who are okay with waiting usually get the biggest rewards. For me, that mindset helped me study for eight years across three degrees to become a doctor. It's how I taught myself piano for more than a decade. It's how I worked on my physique in the gym. All of it slowly and consistently. None of those things gave me instant results, but they gave me long-term meaning. So if you want success that lasts, get comfortable with doing what's hard now in exchange for what matters most later. So those are just a few study mindsets that have helped a lot of Asian students and they've definitely helped me push through med school and still have a life outside of it. But I know that even with the best study tips, sometimes you still feel too lazy to start. This isn't because you're weak and this might sound weird, but it's because you haven't learned how to use your laziness properly. So if you have big goals but struggle to get moving, then watch this video here where I talk about how to take action even when you don't feel like it. It's how I've been able to stop feeling lazy and turn my ambition into action. So click the video to learn more.